Um, so the, the study I'm going to talk about this afternoon is a survey that um, a group of us uh, did a couple years ago. We, um, I was looking around to see if anybody from the team is in here because they're probably going to ask me, why haven't you got us this manuscript to look over yet? <laughs> um, but it was uh, myself and Rick Kelsch at the University of Nebraska, Lincoln, um, Melissa Wilson and Aaron Cordes at University of Minnesota, and Dan Anderson at Iowa State University. We got a, a grant funded um, by North Central Sayer to do some professional development among um, advisors to, to farmers. So extension educators, private advisors, um, certified crop advisors, those kind of folks, talking about trying to promote the use of manure and cropping systems. And so part of our, um, part of what we needed to do to understand what kind of outreach was needed was understand what these folks see as the benefits and barriers to using manure and cropping systems. Um, so this was a survey of Okay, so there's our um, there's the team that worked on this project, um, and then we had a few um, uh, national um, organizations that helped us promote the survey and get it out there. So even though we were located in the Midwest, we really were um, uh, expanding this um, survey nationally, and so in general working together on this project, our goal is we need to reduce non-source point pollution, non-point source pollution from cropland. We need to increase the number of crop acres that are using livestock manure prior to importing inorganic fertilizer. And in order to do that, we need to understand like what are the good stories we tell for why people really like to use manure and what barriers do we need to address um, for those folks who may not uh, see value in using manure in their cropping system. So um, we had three main objectives in the project, um, building awareness about the value of manure, um, demonstrating benefits of manure, and we had some on-farm research and demonstration sites in Iowa, Minnesota, and Nebraska, and increasing the confidence among crop farmers in identifying fields where they're likely to get the greatest value out of using manure. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about one part of that study, which is what do audiences understand and value as benefits of using manure, and what are some barriers to them, um, to those farmers wanting to use manure in their systems, or to the advisors recommending manure use. So this was the demographics of our responses. Um, we do have a, you know, we have a, a greater concentration over the area where the three states from the project are located because we promoted it quite a bit there. Um, but we were able to get responses um, from, from fairly decent spread um, across the US and into Canada. Um, when we had people um, kind of self-identify who they were, 60% were advisors saying like, I'm just an advisor, I don't, um, I don't have livestock or crops myself. But then we had these other combinations of, well, I am a crop farmer and I have an animal feeding operation um, and I do some advising. Um, and so these different combinations here kind of, kind of made it a little more difficult to analyze the data, but at the same time, we knew you're, you're not just a farmer or an advisor. Some are, are, have multiple hats that they wear. So we got almost a thousand responses, which um, was pretty, we thought was pretty good. So one of the questions we asked, um, we asked, all of, so we asked the farmers, the crop farmers versus livestock farmers, how um, knowledgeable do you think you are about these topics? So crop fertility and nutrition, soil physical properties, how those are impacted by manure, how soil biological properties are impacted by manure, crop yields and environmental quality. And so you can see along the bottom blue, they said they were very knowledgeable, moderately, slightly or not. Um, and so most of the crop farmers rated themselves, and the livestock farmers rated themselves pretty high. Um, what we have 95% uh, in that top row that are either moderately or very knowledgeable about crop fertility and nutrition. So, so what we found was they feel pretty confident in their ability to assess manure as an input 
and understand how that will affect crop fertility and um, uh, nutrient management. Then we ask the advisors, what is your perspective of what farmers know about these topics? Um, so advisors, do you think farmers are very knowledgeable about uh, crop fertility, um, soil physical and biological properties? And uh, we haven't really figured out, <laughs> we haven't gotten anybody to explain this to us, I guess, from the advisor side, but they tended to say um, that farmers were not as knowledgeable as farmers said they were about some of these topics. So whereas 52% of crop farmers said, yeah, I feel very knowledgeable about crop fertility and nutrition, advisors would have said 21% mm, of those that we work with really seem knowledgeable about that topic. So to us, that was kind of interesting. I've, I have spoken at a couple of uh, certified crop advisor trainings and asked them if they can explain why this is, but they haven't, they haven't volunteered any information. Um, but one of, you know, one of, as we were looking at the data, one of the things was, well, if we assume that these farmers are really knowledgeable about this, then why did they need us? So, um, so, you know, there's some value in, in thinking we still have, um, we still have value in helping them with these questions around this topic. So, um, so we also asked the question, is manure on a scale of harmful to beneficial, um, how would you rate manure as uh, what its impact is on these different, uh, these five different areas? So um, most, you know, 90, 99% said manure is at least slightly beneficial to crop fertility and nutrition. So that's, that's good, you would expect that. Um, when we have 90% said it's at least slightly beneficial to soil physical properties, uh, 95 on the soil biological crop yield. So there was pretty good agreement that, um, that manure is good for all of these things. We get down to environmental quality and the way we asked the question in the survey was, was a water quality focus. So, um, so we, got, we got quite a range of responses there. Um, some people said, yeah, it's, it's beneficial, uh, maybe slightly beneficial, but we had a lot more that were on the, you know, 32% were like, it's either a little bit harmful or really harmful to use manure. And I think that's unfortunate because, and I'll get to this a little more later, but it's, it's difficult for me to comprehend that you could have a positive impact on soil physical and biological properties and not also be having a positive impact on on nutrient losses to water bodies, right? So we felt like that was maybe a disconnect that we needed to address. But um, so among all the farmers and advisors in the survey, at least you know 99% said manure is at least slightly beneficial to crops. Um, it's it's beneficial to the soil health characteristics and crop yields. But there was quite a bit of variability on the environmental quality. <clears throat> and if we break that down between the advisors, the crop farmers, and the livestock farmers, um, it's probably not a surprise that a greater percentage of livestock farmers rated manure as um, less harmful, more beneficial to environmental quality than maybe the crop farmers or the advisors. So if you're raising livestock, you probably tend to think the manure is not as bad as what some of the other um, segments of the group felt it was. So one of the things we, we came away from this with was maybe we need to do a better job of telling the story about how improving soil biological activity and soil physical properties decreases runoff and erosion and loss of nutrients to water bodies, how having a better nutrient cycling within the soil can help, um, help the plants utilize nitrogen better and maybe reduce leaching of nitrogen because we know all this is, we know we have data that shows, you know, we increase aggregate stability with, with the application of manure and, um, and that reduces uh, propensity for erosion of, of um, sediment on the surface that would carry phosphorus. So it makes sense to, to connect better soil quality to better water quality, but I, I don't think in the eyes of most people, they see manure as a benefit 
um, to anything off of the field. But it's so it's not benefiting water if it gets there, right? But it's benefiting the soil by not letting as much um, runoff and erosion occur from that um, land applied site. And so with inorganic fertilizers, we know um, those are a lot more mobile. There's, they're inorganic. It's a use it or lose it situation. And if a farm has been using inorganic fertilizer for decades and not applying any manure, their soil quality is probably degraded a fair bit. And um, you know, some areas of Nebraska, we are um, really high in nitrates in our groundwater. Um, we have, um, you know, other areas have more a heavier soil, and it's more of a runoff issue there. But, but I guess our message is there's there's ways that manure can improve both of those situations. But maybe we haven't really told that story very well um, to our folks. And so. The other question was, how well do you think manure and fertilizer work together? Does one, is one better than the other? Do they complement each other? Um, so among farmers and advisors who regularly use or recommend fertilizer, the majority said that they complement each other, which we also think is, is true, that we were happy to see that they um, said that, you know, there was some where they said manure is preferred over fertilizer, probably mostly crop farmer or uh, livestock farmers. Um, but for the most part, they said they, they don't compete necessarily. They, they tend to complement each other. Um, and I think that's important as well, because when we're talking with, um, in particular, farmers near uh, beef feedlot operations who realize that's, it's really good organic material we're getting from that feedlot, but there's very little um, ammonia nitrogen available. I'm not getting, you know, I'm not getting the nitrogen I need for this crop season by putting that on. And so we do recognize, yeah, you'll probably have to come back and, and supplement inorganic nitrogen in that system. And that's not a bad thing. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, you're still getting a lot of the benefits from the manure um, and the other nutrients and organic matter in it. Um, another question we asked, um, we had a number of what we thought were challenges to maybe uh, using manure in a cropping system and, and folks ranked those and they could add other ones as well. And I don't, I wasn't terribly surprised by the results of this. These are the top 10 challenges that came out of the survey as um, challenges to using manure in a cropping system. So transportation and application costs, a lot of talks here this week about um, drying manure, processing it in some way that you can transport it farther. We all know nutrient values right around the crop, right around the livestock operation are pretty high. We need to get that moved out farther. Um, so that, that was a big one for folks. Odors, um, I think that's always been a concern with using manure. The timeliness of application, you know, um, a, lot of, a lot of application is gonna have to take place when you don't have a crop growing. And so um, some of these technologies that are allowing in-season application of manure are really beneficial because otherwise we have kind of short windows of time when we can um, do that application. Field conditions kind of goes along with that. Um, if it's too wet and we're, we're worried about compaction. Um, so um, the time and labor requirements, uh, we have a pretty robust um, custom manure hauling industry in Nebraska. Um, so I think a lot of, I think a lot of our folks there tend to get the, the service they need for um, getting manure land applied, but that may not be the case everywhere. Equipment compaction, of course, um, application uniformity. Um, there's, so they're all things that we, we kind of, they weren't surprises to us. I don't know in a lot of other states, but number nine, they're the weed seeds. <clears throat> We have this, um, we have uh, herbicide resistant uh, Palmer amaranth and farmers there are pretty particular about where manure comes from if you're gonna put it on their fields. And when we were doing some of the on-farm research for this, you know, if you've worked, you've done on-farm research, you know, there's some farmers that are pretty chill about everything you're gonna do because they're just excited to be working with you. But one guy was pretty darn cantankerous about if I get Palmer amaranth on my farm after you have been here, I am going to be really, really unhappy with you. So we had to, you know, we had to go out and test manure and see if we were going to introduce that on his farm because he was kind of scary. Like he was, he was adamant about that. Um, so weed seeds are an issue, of course. 
Um, the other thing we wanted to understand, if we're going to try to get some better information out to these the farmers, the advisors, um, and the educators that we work with, what what is their preferred method of getting that? And this is not the first survey of this type. I mean, a lot of people have looked at this. I think it changes a little bit over time. Um, probably what disappointed me the most. Um, so we've started trying to do a lot more digital, you know, um, on-farm research videos, like instead of having an event out there, we do a short video and explain a project or um, podcasts and, and, you know, social media things. And um, that rated pretty low on the list for most of these folks. So that's fair, um, but kind of sad for those of us that have been trying to move into that arena. Still the network of peers is like the very best. And I don't think that's surprising at all. Like farmers talking to other farmers is far more effective than farmers hearing someone like me stand up and tell them you should do this because the research says you should. Um, hearing that experience firsthand from their neighbors is, is much more helpful. The brief articles and fact sheets still seem to be um, very popular. Um, and just, you know, a lot of us have gotten into this decision support tools, like trying to step them through a process to help them make a decision without, you know, having to call somebody and have them come out and, and work through numbers with them. Um, and so, you know, that was hit or miss among the groups, but um, I think our educators um, that work with us more closely were probably a little more comfortable with those types of resources because they've been involved um, as those were developed. Um, so what do we do with this? Um, since we did the survey a couple of years ago, um, one of the things we've been trying to do is talk to farmers who have really positive experiences with using manure and have them tell their story. So we do have, in Nebraska, we have a group called the Alliance for the Future of Agriculture in Nebraska, so AFAN, and they've done some excellent videos um, over the last couple of years coming out of this data and people telling the story of, you know, I've been crop farming for this long and I'd never used manure. And now that I, now that I have, there, you know, there's this new swine farm down the road and I get manure from them. And they're like, I, you know, we have seen such a tremendous impact on our, our yields and our, our quality of our soil. So that's really, I think, really helpful, those um, individual stories. Focusing on helping farmers find the best field to go to with their manure. And if you're around on Friday morning, Leslie Johnson's gonna share, uh, there's a session of a manure mapping game. We call it a game, it's not really a game. It's, it's a scenario, yeah. Um, we had a grand idea that it would be a fun game, but it's not, it's not. We, <laughs> it's fun for us. I don't know if <laughs> we use it at our, we use it at our trainings. And we try to get people around, you know, so we have a map and you're like, you have these different fields in your operation and you have cards that tell you like, you know, this field is, you know, you can, you can measure how many, well, this one's five miles from my farm. But if I take my manure there, I get value out of the phosphorus and the potassium and the nitrogen. And that field could benefit from um, improved soil health. And so I get some value out of that as well. So it's, um, it's a scenario based learning system. Um, but the goal is let's think about the economic, the soil health, the environmental, the nutrients, where, what are all the benefits we can get? You know, we can, we can go a half mile and get rid of it all. But if all we get benefit from is a little bit of nitrogen in there, you know, we're, we're losing out on that phosphorus and potassium value. So this is our, um, I call it the make manure great again activity. But that's not very popular politically, I guess, to call it that. So it's not really the make manure great again. Um, but it, it's our kind of manure value workshop. And um, this is one of the sessions we did with folks. And so they do eventually get to talking with each other and discussing their particular scenarios on their farm and how that impacts their decision making. Um, so this was, this was sort of Leslie's brainchild with uh, Rick Kelsch. And it's been, and it's been really, a uh, really good tool. Um, and then we, you know, some of what we talk about when we're promoting manure, I think is um, the way we talk about it. So is important. So talking about a circular economy and how we're kind of 
the first recyclers in the system of, you know, in, in farming. We've known for years to use manure on crops and feed the crops to the animals. Um, we talk about recycling locally available nutrients as opposed to um, integrating manure into your cropping system. Um, so trying to kind of appeal more to the, I guess, the social side of farming and rural living and um, maybe reduce some of those barriers that are, um, you know, odors and things like that that are more societal um, issues. Um, so just kind of some of our key messages. Um, we know we know we have to conserve soil and we we know we're going to have to start increasing the amount of organic fertilizer products that we're using in cropping systems. We, we It's not really sustainable to continue just using inorganic fertilizers. They may be convenient. You know, they're getting more expensive, obviously, but from an environmental standpoint, we need to be we need to be helping that soil improve, not degrading it. Um, and so we think, you know, a combination of organic and inorganic, um, we talk about that improving resilience of the cropland over time. Um, if you know people using manure in their cropping system, they're really great for helping tell the story of why others should use that. Yeah, it smells. Um, yeah, it's a little bit more of a hassle of when I apply it. But man, my yields are so much better on that field. And that means more to another farmer talking to them than coming from us. And this one I think is probably most important. When used according to best management practices, manure reduces runoff and erosion losses. So yes, using manure irresponsibly is not better for the environment, but using it according to best management practices in the long run is better for the environment. Um, still a hard one, it's a hard sell for that one, but um, that's all I have. So if you have some questions, I'd be happy to take them. <laughs> that's me. I don't know if it looks like me, but that's me. <laughs> Oh, every meeting I go to, yes, every meeting, especially in the beef, well, I mean, the whole state's got beef cattle, but yeah, the, the beef producers will say that, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to till this in because I'm no till and do I get any value from it? And, you know, with the beef producers, I tell them like, there's not a lot of ammonia nitrogen there anyway. So you're not really losing, you know, that's what we worry about with slurry or poultry litter is put it on the surface and all that really great ammonia nitrogen is gone, you know, fairly quickly. Um, so I don't think for those systems, it is 100% essential that they till it in. I, our soil health specialist for the state, um, I was at a function, kind of a social function one time that he was at and he was like a table away. And out of, you know, kind of my um, eavesdropping ear, I heard him say like, you know, it's not the end of the world to till your soil every five years or something. And I was like, did you just say that? Because now I can tell farmers that it's okay to till manure in every five years or something. And he was like, yeah, I don't say it very loud, but it's not the end of the world. And so we're trying to kind of do some research that would maybe demonstrate that you don't undo all the good of no-till by tilling your soil once every five years, which is probably how much they should be putting how often they should be putting beef manure on anyway, because they're going to far exceed their phosphorus needs with an application that comes anywhere close to meeting nitrogen. So for that system, I think it's, it's fair. Um, liquid systems like swine, you know, they can inject poultry, you know, that's kind of a, a different game altogether. Um, it's not going to be injectable. And, and we're kind of, we haven't had a big poultry industry in Nebraska until the last few years when Costco came in and turned us into the poultry and beef state, I guess. I don't know whether well, you wouldn't say that in Nebraska, the beef producers wouldn't like that, but we do grow a lot of poultry there now. So that'll be probably a bigger challenge in that arena. Sure. Yeah, light tillage. We don't need to rip the, yeah, right, right. <laughs> Aaron Hurd. Aaron Hurd was probably like, thank you, Leslie, for saying that and not implying that it's okay to rip the soil up. <laughs> Other questions or comments? Get a kind of final resolution cups of manures or not break it down cattle? We didn't break it down. We, when we get into really looking at it, some of the 
uh, barriers are different for different regions of the country. So like down in the South where it's drier or they've got more of a dry material, transportation is less of an issue. But where there's a lot of liquid manure, we aren't gonna truck that very far. So, so trans alone tells you what is the so, yeah. Yep, the yep. We could, we could kind of draw from that what, what the issue was. Oh yeah, you're liquid. You're not gonna haul it very far. You guys are solid. You don't have such a problem with that. And poultry litter is worth a lot more. So, so yeah, they're like, 